Good morning and welcome back to my channel. My name is Leona. I'm also known as Shakara Transformations. I'm an online coach, a personal trainer and a bodybuilder. Can you see it? Oh, sweet, sweet gains. And today we're going to react to Amberlynn Reed. It's been a while. I don't think I've done a reaction to her since my last, since her last weigh-in. So there's not really much to say, so let's just get into it. I hope she has lost some weight. I'm still doing my cut. I weighed myself this morning and I've lost some weight. But uh, I'll save that for the weekend vlog, which hopefully I should be up to date with. I was going to upload a vlog yesterday, I, but I'll upload it today instead because I'm talking about some serious topics and I didn't like the way I was saying it in the first video. So she is one and a half times speed because I'm going to film another reaction straight after this. Uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, let's get into the reaction, shall we, and go from there. Hey guys, so welcome to Wednesday weigh-in. So how I do my Wednesday weigh-in. I do think she looks like she's lost weight to be fair, like you can tell by her chin, she has like one instead of like two or three, so good for her. I talk about each day, how I felt, what I did, if I was on track, off track, and I think what I do differently than like the typical weight loss video is that every day I do weigh in. Did she upload this at a really random time? Because I woke up this morning at like five and I could see she had uploaded by then, so she, I know she's been trying to upload at weird, weird times. Um, to try and throw people off so that they react to her they watch her rather than the reaction channels so i don't know how late i am with this i just kind of downloaded the file didn't look at the time but um it's uh what time is it now it's eight o'clock here now and so i talk about how much i lost each day i like doing that because it shows where my fluctuations are like if i fluctuate and gain like three pounds one day i'm able to sit there and be like okay well obviously i ate something wrong that caused me to have that happen and then if i lose a lot of weight the next day then i know okay well that meal plan is working really well and i understand that fluctuation i i i think it would be better if she did this under guidance of a professional rather than just trying to do it herself yeah kind of in order for a nutrition plan to work you kind of have to, have to eat the same things over and over again the same sort of macros the same sort of foods i mean you can switch up your protein sources your carb sources and your fat sources but it kind of has to be the same. So if you eat one day, say, a pizza, and then the next day you're eating two and a half thousand calories healthy, how do you know what your body is reacting to? Obviously, you're going to react better to the healthy food than the pizza. But for example, I, when I'm dieting, I pretty much eat the same thing every single day because I know that works for me. Uh, the second I deviate from my meal plan, that's when I'm more likely to hold water. And another thing I've noticed, for example, when I'm dieting, I don't eat cheese and since I've stopped eating cheese my skin is clearing up a lot so clearly I don't react well to cheese which is a shame because I love cheese I think what she's what she's trying to do in terms of an eliminate she's kind of in a way implementing an emulate an, an elimination diet I got there in the end which yes it works it does work but really you need to eliminate certain food groups for more than just a day or two days for it to see if something works. So for me and with, with my clients, I tend to not really do a lot with their nutrition. I work out their plan. I give them some freedom in terms of their uh, macronutrients that they can pick from. But if a plan works, it works. So if somebody is trying to lose weight and they're losing weight, but they're feeling strong and energetic, why would I mess around with their calories? I only switch around the macros or the calories and make small adjustments if people are feeling tired, if they're not having progress anymore, if they're, you know, it's like nutrition is, is something that you, yeah, it takes a little while for the body to react to it, usually a week or two. And then also, once you've set something in motion, it's if it works, it works. Why would you break something that's working, right? Training is a bit different because the body does require different stimulus all the time for it to be to grow. Obviously, the more you train, the more you get in tune with what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Like I know when to train heavy. I know when to go light and go um, higher in my repetitions. I know when to put like play with time on the tempo. I know because I've trained for so long. I know what works for me when depending on my energy levels. Yeah, training is just it's not as it's not as complex. It is, but it isn't um, as nutrition. Nutrition is, neither of it is complex really, it's all, it's all quite straightforward if you know what you're doing to the level, but yeah. anyway, I'll shut up now. Do happen. So last Wednesday on March 11, I weighed 514.8. So in my little notes, what I wrote for that day is that I did overeat. I had mashed potatoes, shredded cheese and peas. For some reason, that whole like recipe, it's not really even a recipe, but it's just really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then I also had some peanut M&Ms, but what I would like to say about that is I stopped myself from eating them before it got 
too bad. I actually gave the rest to Becky. I knew I could easily eat the whole bag and just sit there and just continuously eat them and eat them and eat them, but I did stop myself and it was like a lot of restraint. It was really hard, I'm gonna be honest. So, so I'm glad to hear that she's that she was able to do that if she did because I mean like it's Amber, so it's harsh to say, but you kind of have to take what she says with a pinch of salt. Restraint is a good thing to practice. Um, she needs to learn to be hungry. She needs to learn to be around food that she wants to eat and just say no. And she needs to learn to develop and hone her willpower and her discipline. So a lot of, I get quite often questions about how I manage to do things. A lot of it is just willpower. It is just mind over matter. It is just, okay, this is my goal. I want to achieve that goal. I'm going to stick to it. I'm lucky that I'm quite a stubborn person. So, you know, when I'm doing my cut, we're not going on holiday anymore, but I'm going to try and probably just see it out for at least a month. So to show you like the results that I can get in a month, which is somebody that hasn't got a lot of body fat. But if I can drop, say, I, I don't know, like six to 10 pounds in a month, which is a lot on me because I'm very low on body fat. Like I have abs sitting down. So for me to lose that, it's quite a lot compared to somebody that's really overweight. It's like, it's just to demonstrate that weight loss is not that hard as long as you stick to your diet plan you know as long as you don't overeat you're gonna you're gonna lose weight however i, get, I do get questions in terms of starvation mode so starvation mode is a thing most people are not overweight because they eat too little i don't want to be i don't want to burst your bubble there i'm sorry if i have but if you're overweight and if you're obese and especially if you're morbidly obese it is because you eat too much you may not think you eat too much because you may not have an understanding of what portions are you may not realize every time you're eating what you're consuming but it is because you eat too much because people that are truly starving for prolonged periods of time are not fat just look at people from very uh, impoverished countries or look at people that are anorexic for example now having said that there is a fine line between eating enough for it to be beneficial and the body to burn and keeping your metabolism up and slightly under eating and not having progress. But if you think you're only eating like 1200 calories a day or something like that, you're probably not, it probably isn't, that probably isn't the right, you probably are wrong in how you're counting. So for me, for example, last week I didn't lose any weight because I was kind of eating chicken here and there, I was moving house. I wasn't on track with my food. I underate some days, I overate a little bit some days. Most days I just underate. I didn't eat on regular intervals. I didn't eat the food I should be eating. I didn't have a weight loss. I didn't have a weight gain. Things stayed the same. I expected that. However, this week, I actually weighed myself this morning. This week so far, so since Saturday morning, I have lost half a kilo, which is a pound, just over a pound. And that is because I've been eating more. I've been eating at regular intervals and I've been sticking to... The, my meal plan in essence i did eat a slice of bread with some cheese <laughs> but besides that point i stuck to my meal plan except for that one mishap but so for me it is there is a fine line between eating for it to be effective and for me to burn fat as well as keeping my metabolism going and um eating too little and it being becoming counterproductive but i am very lean i train a lot so you, you, it's like it's kind of comparing apples and oranges yes you can under eat but the, the reality is it's like if you're morbidly obese you have so much body fat that you can lose weight even at quite a big caloric deficit just look at the people from the, like my 600 pounds life they they lose up to 50 pounds in a month sometimes because they have that amount of weight to lose i i sit at about 18 percent body fat that's on that's athletic that's low for a female so for me to lose even weight, even for me to lose even more body fat, I have to be even stricter. And there is that fine line of having to sometimes I know I know when I have to implement a refeed and when not. I usually have one every weekend anyway, just for sanity purposes, uh, for to keep just to keep myself sane and to have something to look forward to. Unless I'm prepping, then it's more dependent on what my progress is doing. But sometimes I do need that extra burst in calories in order to keep my metabolism going. If you're like Amber, close to 600 pounds or close to 500 pounds now, that's not a concern. You don't have to worry about cheat meals. You can do it. I think cheat meals are good. I think having a meal, not a day, a meal, I think it's a good way to stay on track. So you put yourself in a caloric deficit throughout the week and then once a week you have something to look forward to to treat yourself. I think that's a great idea. It, I think it's, it helps keep you sane, keeps you on track. But a cheat day, a cheat meal should not become a cheat day. A cheat day is not cool because then you're overeating your calories. 
So you put yourself in a deficit all week to then just overeat during the week. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. It's like they're good in the week and then the weekend comes around and they just eat whatever because YOLO, weekend, yeah, but that's not how it works. The body doesn't know when it's the weekend or when it's a weekday. So if you reduce your calories throughout the week to only eat extra on the weekend and put them back on again, what's the point of reducing the calories in the week to start with? Unless you want to maintain. The next day on March 12th, I weighed in at 514.2. So that means I was down 0.6 from the day prior. So this is the day where I noticed that after I had... I wish she took screenshots of these weights rather than just telling us because she could easily insert a picture here of this of of the scale right she doesn't have to show herself weighing it but at least show a picture i have a smoothie in the morning i get really dizzy um it's something that i noticed for a few days now but on that day march 12th it was really bad and it almost felt like i was actually going to like pass out even though i knew i wasn't and i why would you feel dizzy after a smoothie it's full of sugar so it's not like she's eating too little or she's low on like it's nothing to do with the blood sugar levels because she has a shit ton of fruit in there Free would be happy. I think the biggest reason for that might be is because I do do IF where I don't eat for a very big large portion of the day. I do intermittent fasting, but okay, sure. Let's go, let's see what she does. And I think that ending my fast like that with a smoothie, for some reason, I don't think it's like adding up with my body and it's not really, it's, I guess it's not really good for it. So I have stopped smoothies. That makes no sense. To me, unless I'm completely wrong in what I'm saying here, or um, how I understand nutrition, which by the way, I'm not a doctor or anything, so don't at me. She ends her fast by drinking carbohydrates. Why would she get lightheaded? So the only time I will get lightheaded is because I've trained, I've depleted all of my energy and I need to eat. But you shouldn't get lightheaded after you've eaten. You get lightheaded before you eat, but not after you've eaten. And also with her fast, I mean, is she just sleeping this time? I don't know. So I eat my last meal at seven o'clock in the morning, eight, seven o'clock in the evening, I mean, and then I eat again about 10, 11, my first meal. So that's how I fast. But that's more by choice because once I start eating, I get hungry. And I don't know, I, I just, I'd rather go to bed hung, I'd rather go to bed with food in my stomach than wake up and eat. I'm not really like a hungry person when I wake up. In the morning and now I eat things like Luna bars because that has less sugar hasn't made me um, dizzy at all sometimes I'll just have like turkey bacon and rice cakes with like laughing cow cheese on top um so now she's saying that it's the sugar that's causing her to make you feel dizzy she's never had a problem with dizziness and sugar before so I don't see why now suddenly it's gonna be a problem and those things have definitely been making you feel like, a lot better okay, if you guys have water cups. um it's just running the kitchen it's not like annoying or anything so for that day like honestly every there is by the way such a thing as being carb drunk so when i get ready for a show what i'll do is in, in the middle of the week if the show is on a saturday or sunday in the middle of the week i'll have two days of carb loading because i can be quite sensitive to carbohydrates and it takes me quite a long time to fill out so what i'll do is for like for two days straight i'll just pretty much eat carbs and it sucks i hate i hate the carb loading days are the worst they they sound they're great the first meal is like oh my god carbohydrates and then like a few meals in it sucks because you literally there is a thing called carb drunk and you just feel super tired lethargic you have no energy um you feel headachey you're thirsty man i hate those days they literally are the worst days out of out of a prep but it's part of the game, part of bodybuilding. You need to fill up and then deplete it all so you look like super sharp on stage. Everything went really well. So the next day on March 13th, I weighed 512.2, which was a two pound loss from the day prior, which this day actually hit down 68.2 pounds. So that's exciting, although I don't feel like super excited about it because like I have other goals I want to reach. So that was my first day with a new breakfast, which I had rice cakes with people. I'm only noticing her hair. It looks quite nice like this, actually. I like that she's putting a bit more effort into her appearance lately. P2 on it, which I actually did vlog. And I really did enjoy that. Although I realized while I was eating it, I put too much PB2. So I ended up taking some off and then it was perfect. And on that day, Becky and I talk about how she can help me with binging. Because a lot of the times when I binge, it's like, I ask her, hey, we make me ramen. You guys know that whole story. It's whatever. Um, it's not her fault. It's my fault. I'm asking. It's kind of both of your faults. I get what she's saying. It is, but it's kind of both of your faults. Like Becky needs to be able to put her foot down, but I can imagine she becomes real bratty if she doesn't get what she wants. Ramen does sound good though. Oh, I've got some nuclear ramen at home. Mm, nuclear nu nuclear noodles with some um, with some soft boiled eggs. Oh. Or at the end. But I told Becky if that ever happened. On a separate note, I discovered Mike Chang. So I'm kind of at the moment. There's a lot going on, and I kind of want to watch things that are not super serious because there's enough serious things going on in real life 
So yeah, I've been watching Mike Chang and oh god, that guy, that guy has the perfect job. When he gets to travel and just eat food, I wish. And how does he stay like in the shape that he is? The man must go to the gym so much. I mean, he's in good shape, obviously, but like, I don't, you know, there is a saying like you can't out train a bad diet. So I'm just curious how the hell he stays in shape. But yeah, his job though, getting paid to travel the world and just eat food. Oh, dream job. Again, I want her to tell me things like, don't do it, you're gonna be mad at yourself, you're gonna feel super guilty. And just kind of be like super, super stern about it. And she has agreed that she's going to do that. So let's hope it works. So the next day on March 14th, I weighed in at 509.6, which, which was a 2.6 weight loss from the day prior. So that day I woke up with really bad self-loathing. I honestly just like hated myself. And the reason why is because of my lymphedema. It's been on my mind a lot lately. Norm Does she go to the doctor for that? Does she actually see somebody about that? Because I don't know, I don't know if they can do anything about lymphedema. It's just weight loss for the most part, I believe. I still think she has lipoedema, right? Rather than lymphedema. But I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Yeah, I just like put it in the back of my mind, like back when I wasn't losing any weight. But now that I am losing weight, it's like parts of my body are getting smaller, but then other parts of my body that have lymphedema, which is my right calf and my lower stomach, those areas aren't getting um maybe she does have lymphedema then if it's just in one part body part because that's why i've always just been confused about because both her legs look like they have water retention in them which is more of a sign of lipoedema rather than lymphedema because lymphedema is a blocked lymph node and you can massage it to get the water retention out and to break up uh, blockages but that makes sense if she only has a certain body part then it probably is lymphedema rather than lipoedema getting smaller it's making me feel super like self-conscious it's making me hate myself because it's not curable and i think that's the part that freaks me out the most i don't believe her let's ask google shall we there we go there's no cure for lymphedema treatment focuses on reducing the swelling and controlling the pain exercise wrapping your leg massage did you hear that i lost my stomach pneumatic compression compression garments Complete decongestive therapy. Well, it looks like it. I'm sure you can manage it though, right? I'm sure it was all to do with. Oh, well, here was me talking. Talking absolute shit, but I'm sure that diet and weight loss probably can fix it to some level. Is I'm always going to have like a deformed body, and I know it's like a very bad way of thinking, but that's just where I was at on that day. And on that day, also, I was getting a lot of messages and comments saying I only lost weight because I was sick. I, I lost 50 pounds in January because I was sick. Couldn't eat because I was sick. A lot of people were saying those things and I was already hating my- It kind of is like that though, because you've not really shown any progress at all for the last two months. So, you, you know, you lost a lot of weight in January when you were sick on and off continuously. And then since then your weight loss has been very minimal. So there has been weight loss, but it's been for your size, very minimal. So, so much that day that I was reading that stuff and it honestly really got to me because the whole thing about losing 50 pounds in January because I was sick, I only lost 18 pounds in January and a lot of people were saying I couldn't eat while sick. But also, okay, maybe she didn't lose the whole 50 pounds in just January, but in the run up to January, she was sick a lot as well. Just bear that in mind. She was constantly on medication. She was having infection after infection. She had a UTI that lasted for several months. So maybe she wasn't sick with the, 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 the gland, the strap or whatever she had. Was it streptococcin? I think it was, right? Something. She had like some sort of like throat infection. So maybe she did lose some weight before then, but again, she was sick during this period of time. She, we haven't heard a complaint about being sick for a couple of months now. But I had tonsillitis, which was literally oh, only for a week. And out of that week, there was only three days where it hurt to eat. But the thing so. is, I still ate. Your girl still binged. And ice cream was involved. A lot of it. So I, I don't like quite understand that. But then once I was done with the whole tonsillitis things, I was, I was able to get back on track. It, it's just confusing because it's like being sick had nothing to do with the fact that I sat there and I would say no to binging a lot of the days. Like, yes, in a month when we look at that. But it does though, because if you have proper tons, tonsillitis, if you have proper tonsillitis, and I've had it a few times, like I'm quite prone to having like swelling of the glands. I've been hospitalized for it a few times. If you're that sick, even if you want to eat, you can't because it feels like sh like swallowing razor swallowing razor blades. So, yeah, you might not think that directly it affected it, but it would have done to some degree for sure because it would have been too painful to eat even if you wanted to eat. Nobody wants to be sick. Average, you know, I I do binge like I'm not 100% perfect, but 
I used to binge every single day. Now if I look at a month and I can sit there and be like, wow, I only binged four days out of that month. That's crazy. That's because I said no to binging up most to easily 60 times. And that's because I watched what I ate. It's because I ate smaller portions and it's because I was trying. It's not. Okay, that's, I, I can believe she is saying no to binges, but at the same time, why is her weight loss still, it should be more than that. Because when she, she in order for her to maintain her weight, she needs to eat between four and 5,000 calories. But if she's still sticking to her meal plan, which she claims to be around 1,500 to 2,000, there should be a lot more weight loss than what there is. That's just the, the science, the basic maths of weight loss, energy in versus energy out. So I think she's still overeating, but I don't know, like, they have a way of classifying things. So she might be overeating and not considering it a binge. I don't know. But for her to still eat close to 4,000 calories when she should only be eating two, for example, you might not see it as a binge because you didn't go all out and didn't care. It's still overeating is still bad. Because I was just like, woo, I'm gonna eat whatever I want and weight loss is just falling off me because I'm sick. That doesn't make sense because I have been sick in the past. I have been sick a lot in the past. I have had tons of infections and I have done nothing but maintain a very heavy weight or I have gained and gained and gained. So it was just very insulting. It takes away like all the hard work. And I think that might be a really big reason why like, oh, I'm down 60 pounds, but like, I don't feel happy for myself because I have thousands of people telling me that I could be doing better. And it does mess with your brain. I don't care if it was just like one person in my life saying these things to me or if it's a thousand people online saying these things to me. I put in the efforts to lose weight like I never have before. So that is why I'm losing weight. So the next day on March 15th, I weighed in at 507.4, which was a 2.8 weight loss from the day prior. So that was actually the lowest I've ever been at 60. See, that's the point, right? Like, so she's tracking all of this. If this is true, how is it that she's, she's on one side saying how hard she's been working and it wasn't by fluke, but now she seems to be sticking to a weight loss, uh, to a weight loss plan. What that is, I don't know, but she seems to be sticking to something. And look, she's losing several pounds a day. So why was this result not there previously when she also was working hard on it? It doesn't make sense, you know? There's a contradiction there. So it's, she probably just done, didn't work on it as hard as what she claimed, or she's actually taking it serious now. I don't know. Four pounds lost on that day. Like, whoa. So this day was particularly hard for me because the whole virus. Um, I know a lot of people are suffering with worry and anxiety. I wanna cry just talking about it. Um, this has just been, it's been scary. Um, it's been sad, it's been heartbreaking, it's just, it, we've never been through something like this. Um, I'm gonna speak for myself, I'm 29 years old. So in the last 29 years, nothing like this has happened. And... Well, I think there was a SARS outbreak, right? About 15 years ago. Not that I know too much about it, but that's, that, that's... I don't know how it compares in terms of uh, the effects, but that was quite serious. This is a strain of SARS. And yeah, it is really serious. Um, I personally think that I, I didn't... Mock, mock it, I just didn't know the severity of the situations because I, I, I just don't believe in what the government tells me, frankly. Um, I think media, news media and governments tell you what you want to hear and what they think you need to hear. So I don't know if they were underplaying it, if they were overplaying it. I don't know till this day if China is fully, fully cured. I don't know. They weren't particularly upfront in the beginning to say that something is going on. How can you guarantee that all of the small villages and all the rural places that they have been cured? So I don't know. I don't know where we are. I think we have, we should be worried. Some countries have implemented martial law. I'm pretty sure it's quite serious. Just do what you can do. Stay safe. If you have to go out, be sensible. Keep your distance from people. And then just wash your hands or touch your face. Just be sensible, you know? You can't do more than that. But it looks like UK might be coming in a lockdown tomorrow. I think, yeah, tomorrow we might get a lockdown. And this morning I went um, on the way back from the gym. I just did some cardio. And yes, I wiped everything before and after. But on the way back, yeah, I drove past the supermarket and there was queues waiting for the supermarket to open. That's the first time I've seen it like that. There's not, it's not really been panic here. Things, so certain shelves have been empty of certain things. There's always been fresh produce, but queuing to get into the supermarket, that's definitely new. And I think that's because tomorrow there's going to be a lockdown. I don't know what to expect. I don't, I just don't, it's just the unknown is scary. Everything that's going on in the world right now is like, it makes me want to just go in a corner and just eat all those worries away all those feelings away and i'm having to fight myself ever not being funny but what she needs to do now more so than ever more so than ever is make sure she eats healthy and she gets good nutrition in her not just calories nutrition food that is that has a variety of minerals and vitamins food that's gonna keep, get her as healthy as possible she can't she really really out of many people she is one of the few people that can't afford to be 
getting sick because she could potentially die and that's that's really scary but i'm being deadly serious about that she is she gets infections all the time and i just dread to think what her immune system is like she doesn't really have the best diet to start with it's a lot of it is healthy but not really um she doesn't really get i just don't like her diet is lackluster at best she thinks she's eating healthy but she's not really you know it's it's like fake healthy it's better than what it has been it's better than takeout but it's not healthy um so yeah i i hope she's i hope she is um doing her utmost to feed herself a a very well balanced diet and uh, that she stays out of harm's way, try to not get in contact with people, try to not have takeout because you don't know where people's hands have been. Every single second not to overeat because when I feel this way, I have always turned to food and it's always made me feel so much better while I'm eating it. And now it's like, I can't turn to food. So I have to like suffer, like literally suffer through the anxiety. Good, this will make you a stronger person. This is something that you've had to do, that you should have started doing a long time ago. Success, progress, is suffering. Things don't come easy to nobody. Nobody likes to do things they don't want to do. So this is good. Even if you're being forced to develop your willpower and your strength, it's a very horrible situation that is forcing you to do so, but I'm happy that you're learning to test yourself and see what you're actually capable of. Because have you ever tested yourself? Probably not. And this is probably part of the reasons why she easily gets anxiety over very minute things is because the virus isn't a minute thing. I just mean things like taking a phone call or this, she gets anxiety about a lot of things. This is a rightfully so something to be worried about, but I think it's a good thing that she's learning to see what she's made of. It's not a nice situation to be in, but I, I think this is good for her in a way because she's forced to develop her willpower. And the pain and the worry and the tears and just the fear and it's scary because like i don't have that outlet no more so i'm having to find other ones so i was able to succeed and i did not binge on that day i was also being pointed out that i do pay attention to calories if you guys watched my what i ate today i didn't even notice it but in the video i kept talking about calories even though at the beginning of it i said i don't count calories i don't pay attention to calories a lot of people were pointing out to me okay why does she keep talking about calories if she doesn't pay attention to calories so i had to sit down and like really process like how do i decide what i'm gonna eat and you guys i pay attention to calories every single time I eat. I make sure that my breakfast stays at a certain amount of calories. I make sure that my lunch stays at a certain amount of calories and my dinner. Um, I'm allowed to, you know, go off base there by like 100 or 200 calories, but it's not like I'm sitting there logging everything and restricting myself because even if I did eat a little- She is kind of contradicting herself here because she's saying about logging everything and sticking to a certain amount of calories, but then she's saying that she's not restricting herself, but you are though in essence. If you're sticking to a, a macronutrients a total or a calorie total or you're excluding certain food groups you are restricting yourself which i'm not saying is a bad thing you have to do what you have to do in order to reach a certain goal but that is still restriction you might not think of it as such but it is still is but more one day it's okay because i felt like my body needed it versus oh i just want to binge or eat like if i eat a little bit more in a day because I seriously felt like, oh my God, I'm actually hungrier than usual. Then that's okay. I think that's what I was talking about when it came to like intuitive eating, but I just appreciate you guys, a lot of you guys pointing out that girl, you do pay attention to calories. Just admit it because I do, because example, when I went to Ruby Tuesday, you know, what I originally wanted was something that was like 800 plus calories. And I was like, well, no. <laughs> so I did choose something that was less calories because when it comes to me, if I didn't know anything about calories and I was to sit there and do like intuitive eating, I wouldn't lose weight. That's a point blank period. But since I do, that's, I think, a fair point. At least she can acknowledge that. And the reason why, if you're a morbidly obese or obese, you don't know how to eat intuitively. Because if you knew how to eat intuitively, you wouldn't get to the size you are. You don't understand portions. Because otherwise, if you did, you wouldn't be morbidly obese. It's quite simple, really. Um, the same as somebody that's, like, potentially really, really slender. And if they're eating all the time, like, they might just, like, live off things like energy drinks. Or something like that, you know? And they might not get enough calories in them. So just because, yeah, that's that's a very that's a very fair comment. I do know a lot about calories, and I do look at the nutrition label, and I do pay attention to serving size. I think that's really what's helping me. Next day, on March sixteenth, I weighed in at five hundred five point two, so that was a two point two weight loss from the day prior. And she's gonna get under five hundred pounds. I hope she does. I really do. I really do. My notes on that day is just I consistently all day wanted to overeat. I wanted to binge. My like literally, you guys, my emotions are like. I don't know what they're doing. It's like a tornado is inside of my body and I can't get it out. It's, I know a lot of people are dealing with this. It's called being hungry. Welcome, welcome to the club, love. 
Um, and I do also want to point out that on that day, I said no to a brownie, and it was the hardest Thank thing I've done in a long time. And I know a lot of people are going to watch this and be like, you were pathetic, but if you no. struggle with the eating or... I think that's really good. I'm actually quite happy for her, if that's the case. And to be honest, it, it's it's all reflected in the... If she is going to be under 500 pounds and she's lost like 14 pounds in a week, that just proves she's stuck to a diet. It's just proof that she's stuck to a diet. So good, good. If you've start, struggled with like hardcore overeating or food addiction, then you understand how powerful a no is. So the next day on March 17th, I weighed in at 504.8, which was a 0.8 weight loss from the day prior. And I wrote down that I was upset about my weigh in. I was upset because I only lost 0.8. So losing 0.8 in one day is amazing. A lot of people wish for that. But for some reason, because I was losing so well in the last few days, like I was down like two pounds and then 2.2 and then 2.8, 2.6. Like I wanted more of that. I want to lose this weight fast because I'm feeling so much better. I just can't even imagine how my body's going to feel when I just continue losing. And it's just, I just, I want to lose this weight. Like that's a point blank period. So for some reason I was really upset. So you just stop saying point blank period. It's getting a little bit, she's overusing the verbiage. Um, I overuse certain things as well, but I added them out. But um, you're not going to always get the same results. The fact that she's managed to lose that much weight consistently is really impressive to start with. Um, I hope it does. She's not gonna. It's not gonna result in a binge though, and then her basically being the same weight again. Not about that. And I actually put a quote down what I said yesterday. I said everything would be better while in a bed with Ben and Jerry, because again, another day where I wanted to binge my feelings away, and I literally could not stop thinking about a pint of ice cream. Like that was. It was pretty bad. So that's what a Ben and Jerry is, by the way, which I'm sure <laughs> everyone knows. But again, another day of success. Like you guys, I have weeks Good. where I am able to say no to wanting to overeat. I'm able to say no to the binges. I'm very strong. But then there are weeks where I'm just not, where I literally am just not strong enough. The thing what she needs to do is she needs to, when she feels the urge to binge, she needs to look back at days like this, weeks like this, where she has been able to say no, the success she's had, how great she felt the day after, rather than the guilt afterwards, feel the sense of, r r look back at the sense of accomplishment the pride you feel because you managed to stick to your guns rather than give in to your emotions and that's what she needs to do so good i'm happy for this and that's just part of this process and something that i'm gonna have to continue to accept that sometimes i am weak but this week i was not weak so today on wednesday march 18th i weighed in at Ooh, almost I, I do think he can see it, see it, see, I do think he can see it on her face, 100%. Well done, well done. Now 503.8, so that means from the day prior, I lost 0.6, so that means this week, I am down 11 pounds. Well done, Down Ambo. 11 pounds. That's very good. So that means in total, I've lost 68.6 pounds, so good. that means I'm pretty much down 70 pounds, because in 1.4 or 1.6, I will be down exactly 70 pounds. Can we just like... Oh, her knuckles are looking really bad though. That's really, that is concerning. Um, I know that it might be something to do with diabetes and stuff. So, because they haven't looked that bad in a long time. That's why I'm concerned by it. That's not like being nitpicky. That is literally like an actual concern of there. She's looking unhealthy there. Wow, celebrate. So down 11 pounds. That's really freaking good. I For some reason, I just feel like I'm not doing good enough. And it's the craziest feeling because in the past, I would be like thrilled and like bragging about losing 11 pounds. But it's just like... I'm not there. I used to brag about losing two pounds in a week. And you guys, I just, for some reason, just subconsciously, mentally, I don't know what's going on. I just feel like I'm not doing good enough. And I think it's because I want to lose more, but yet I'm... So this, I think, is a bit unnecessary. This is like begging for likes, for positive commentary. You don't need to do that. People are going to be... People can start, are starting to see that you're losing weight. People are being positive. You can even see, like, with her eyes, she's kind of, like, half smiling. because uh, It's almost like she knows that she is being a little bit manipulative here, which I'm sure she knows. It, I think this whole begging for, like, I just don't feel like I'm doing good enough. It's like, no. Get out of that victim mentality. Just go, like, look, I've achieved this. Well done, me. Move on. Another strong week ahead next week. Rather than it's like, oh, I've done so well, but I just don't feel like I have. Please tell me I'm good. That's basically what it is, and that is a little bit annoying. I'm doing everything I need to like I'm eating small portions I'm cooking for myself I am saying no to binges overeating so it's like I'm doing everything that I can so I need to just let my body do its thing it'll, it'll lose what it wants when it wants I do need to be proud of the 11 pound weight loss this yeah. week and I am just keep it at the and I just I cannot wait to be in the 400s I think that's what it is I think it's because that's like my like goal that I've set in mind is like I want to be in the 400s so bad I don't want to ever see the 500s again so to lose that since I'm 503.8 to, to what I have to lose to get to 400 sorry I'm like stumbling on my words is 3.8 or like 
four pounds. So I honestly can't wait. And I feel like that'll definitely happen. Just keep this momentum. Keep going strong. Keep doing what you've been doing. Don't give in to binges. And next week you'll be like maybe on the 490s. Not 590s, 490s. And this week I'm crossing my fingers because I feel like I'm starting to lose a little less every day now, like 0.6 and 0.8, but I mean, it's definitely possible. So I hope you guys had a good week. Um, I hope you guys are staying safe and doing everything you can to continue staying safe. We are all in this together and it's scary. And I just hope we get through it. Every time I start wanting to talk about it, I get emotional. Okay, so let's not talk about it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So um, I do believe she's losing weight. I think you can see it. I wish she would stop this semi-manipulative narrative of boohoo me, feel sorry for me, give me ass pats. She's doing great. Let your hard work speak for itself. Don't beg for it. Let let the work support, let the work, let your results speak for themselves. It, just keep it up. And also anytime you feel like you're binging, just look back at this week and go like, look at the success I've had, look at the weight loss I have. And just remember how you felt last week when you did the weigh in, when you gained all that weight back that you've lost. Just bear in mind your successes and really focus on your failures in how they make you feel rather than giving into the, to, to, the, the temporary emotions of wanting to eat, of wanting temporary gratification. Just think long term. Long term, think how, how great you felt once you accomplished something, once you suffered through that hunger. That's what you need to focus on. Don't focus on the, the short term satisfaction of eating some ice cream. Anyway guys, that's it for me. I'm gonna go and react straight away to another video. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you soon. Bye. Oh yeah, thank you for watching by the way. Thank you for watching, comment, like, subscribe if you want to if you don't want to, that's fine as well. Bye.